I remember waiting in line at the airport trying to get through the immigration checkpoint, standing next to people from other countries. A movie scene often surfaced and a question often popped in my mind. What is the real purpose of the trips? Can we trust our alien visitors? Of course, the aliens waiting for immigration questions are usually not the aliens we need to worry about. And we only allow the ones who come in peace to enter. However, we can't be so sure on the aliens who are not on the immigration watch list, especially when you don't enter through the checkpoint. Of course, you may argue that our governments do put the space aliens under radar and keep a close watch on them. We don't know only because that information is on a need to know basis. And we for sure are not on the VIP list. I think it will be interesting to know how many residential aliens are from space. But it is another topic for another day. However, it is more important to know why are they here? However, what I am about to show you is what I think. I would like to think it is logical analysis, but people may call that loco talk. So why are they here? Some of you may have heard of the gold digger theory. The aliens wanted our gold. They came long ago and enslaved the primitive people to get the gold from Earth to repair their atmosphere. It's a good theory, but shipping gold a zillion miles away? Hmm. Unless there is a portal. But even for that, who is going to unload the gold at its final destination? Do they have to transport the slaves there also? Let's say that the gold is not necessary. But what else does the Earth have that they may need? We know so little about our Earth, it is actually shocking. It was only three months ago, scientists announced that they found water in the deep Earth, actually holding about the same amount of water as our oceans. That means it is possible that water found in the mantle transition zone laying 410 to 660 kilometers beneath us, can sustain life. Of course, the most likely reason the aliens know what we don't know may be simple. They were the ones that put us here. I can make a 24 hour long video if I want to, to talk about evidence supporting the alien origin, a theory of humans. However, no matter where the human is from, I think most of you would agree that ancient civilizations existed on Earth much longer than the 10,000 years your history teacher told you, right? Why was the reset button pressed again and again in the past? Is it part of the human experiment? Are we such failures that we must be flushed out? You can call me fear mongering, but can you deny the danger we are in? You can call the hurricanes bad luck, the polar ice melting a course of nature, the nonstop earthquakes and more and more unidentified, unknown, unusual objects flying past in our space. On October 14, 2017, a small reddish object, a little bigger than our International Space Station, zipped through at 26 kilometers per second on a highly hyperbolic orbit. Its peak speed was 88 kilometers per second at perihelion. Actually, when it was found on October 19, it was 46 kilometers per second. They first called it a comet when they found it October 19, 2017, but reclassed it to an asteroid a week later. It came really close to Earth, only 60 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Did you know what that means? Okay, if we use the sighted speed when we found it, 46 kilometers per second, it could reach us in 145 hours. That is six days. Of course, you may argue that is a rock that already passed us and the next scheduled visit is not until at least 7 million years from now. You see, because I can't find any articles showing the time it completes its orbit, I checked on the orbit with the second most eccentricity. 
and its orbit is over 7 million years. So I must be crazy to worry about a small asteroid that already passed by and won't be back for at least 7 million years and did no harm to us. But like people say, the devil is in the details. So let's take another look before we brush this under the carpet. I will say this object behaves more like a spaceship than an asteroid. I doubt if you can explain its orbit using gravity. And it moves so fast that it did not get pulled in by planets like Jupiter, nor sucked in by our Sun. It maintained a safe distance from the Earth. But it is also a distance close enough for it to send crews to Earth if that is on their to-do list. So is that why they are here? Taking over our Earth? We don't know, but if you ask me, I will say it is not very likely, as they did not seem to have made the stop. Although we can't rule that out, but based on the size of the object, it is not very likely they are the kind of massive alien invaders as was seen in the Independence Day movie. But we really should not try to solve space puzzles with our closed minds. Maybe the aliens are super small in size, but big in technology. Maybe the small rock houses two million of their spaceships. But it is unlikely in this case, or I should say it is not likely our Earth is the final destination. But why did they take such a strange route in visiting our solar system? To answer that, we must take a look at this video taken in 2012. I actually saw this on CNN a few years ago, which prompted me not only to dig deeper into this alien visits topic, but also prompted me to make my own videos on the subject. As you can see, an object the size of Earth was caught by a NASA camera sucking energy from our sun and took off after refueling. The stayed near the sun for over 80 hours. When it moved away, it caused a great turbulence in the solar atmosphere that shaked for more than five hours. This proves that the unknown object is there. The image is located in the original files of NASA's image system, HelioViewer. We could confirm that this black sphere actually appears in the shots. Since March 8, 2012 at 1400 hours universal time, when it starts to be visible, it comes closer and we can clearly see that it comes from an area outside the sun. So is that why they come? Possibly, but what NASA caught is a spaceship the size of our Earth. But what we found was a rock the size of the International Space Station. How should I say this? If the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit. Actually, I said in my prior video that I don't think the object sucking energy is as big as our planet, but the camera can't lie. What NASA filmed is a huge object. So here comes my theory. The object may be as small as a spaceship, but when it comes that close to the sun, it must have a protection layer that is as big as our planet. Actually, this is not the first time a camera caught an unexplainable object in the sky. I remember seeing this video about an object blocking a planet. I don't know enough to know what it is, but this was on live TV news. So we have the exact date and time to decode this mystery. You can say it is Venus, as that is the only other planet that has different phases that can be seen on Earth. However, not on that day according to many UFO researchers. So, I think it is another object passing between Earth and that planet or near the planet, and it was somehow caught by that TV crew. On a positive note on this news is that if we can find an object that small, that dim, and flying that fast, 
we can probably find more. So, we may have, say, five days to prepare for the next alien... evasion? Of course. It took us many years to find our first exoplanet in 1992. But, since then, we have found 3,671 planets in 2,751 solar systems. Now we found the first interstellar object. So, pretty soon we will be flooded with findings. And of course, hopefully, they will all come in peace. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.